Hello, um, F Magazine Italy. This is Amber Heard, publicist. I'm just checking in to make sure that you're still running that cover piece on Amber. Yes, um, you're still running that. It's coming out in November. Great. And she's going to be on the cover. You're, you're confirming that. And we've agreed to the pictures, right? The ones where, you know, she looks really, really vulnerable and innocent and beautiful, right? Right. Okay. And also just to make sure for any you know, of our future plans that we've discussed, she's the victim, right? She's a victim of misogyny. Is that where you're landing in this whole kind of situation? Right, right. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the cover. Thank you so much. Hey, Amber, it's me, your publicist. I got good news. F Magazine is definitely running that cover. You are definitely, definitely the victim of misogyny. Uh, I've confirmed that. Also, remember, we got that open letter thing going as well. And I promise you, I promise you, we're still working. Keep your chin up. Everything's going to be okay. We're working those lines. Yes, yes, yes. I have a very goofy sense of humor sometimes, but that was exactly the scenario I saw playing out in my head when I noticed that Amber has landed her first magazine cover since the trial. And it's in a celebrity culture magazine in Italy called F. Now I have nothing against this celebrity culture magazine. I'm sure it's, you know, probably something akin to us magazine or people magazine here, maybe more like pop sugar or something like that. I don't know. I, I tried to do some research on it, but it is very telling that it was really hard to get statistical information about this magazine. So but I just want to put some, you know, uh, context around this. I thought it was very interesting that the first time she appears on a cover, it's in, you know, a relatively probably second or thir third tier property in a foreign country. Um, it's closer to where she is currently staying, apparently in Mallorca. It is in Europe where she, I think, believes that she has a more favorable reading. And also, from a PR perspective, uh, you know, when you are basically dialing for dollars, trying to get your client some coverage, you're going to go worldwide. You're not going to stick with just the United States, which is really the place where you want to win media. But you, you just keep working those contacts. And apparently they found a contact. They found somebody who's willing to pick up that mantle of Amber is a victim of misogyny. Amber sees herself as a victim of a Me Too movement gone wrong. And that is what is portrayed in this article. It's a, you know, brief article, you know, it's meant more to be kind of a pictorial layout. Now, from what I could glean, there are basically two kind of write-ups in this magazine, but I was only able to find the translation for one of those write-ups, but that was enough for me, to be honest with you. So I'm going to read through this translation that one of Amber's supporters helpfully uh, translated, and then very tellingly, I'm going to show you what this Amber supporter said about the writer of the article. Because when I read what she said about the writer of the article, I thought, you know what? She's definitely an Amber supporter. She, she, she That seems like something Amber would say. So hold on and uh, we'll get to it. The Her Depp trial has been a deadly hit for the Me Too movement. But usually those who say this are the people who are are the people who experienced 2017 with annoyance and stupor and who couldn't wait to see the end of a movement that has never been a movement. Me Too and all the campaigns that five years ago have forcefully opened a new chapter in the conversation about us and violence against women in the workplace or in one's personal life aren't actually a movement, but rather a moment in a longer history, the history of feminist movements that for more than two centuries work and fight to question our perception of reality 
and create a more fair world where nobody has to feel alone or forced to suffer in silence. Wow. The Me Too movement did not have to be a feminist movement. The Me Too movement is a is about sexual advice anywhere in the home or the workplace. Abuse is not limited to men or women. Men and women, all genders, types, races, creeds, religions, socioeconomic statuses, all of them engage in some sort of... And to paint one side as the ultimate victims and the only ones to be believed and one side as the always abuser is a denial of democracy. It's a denial of equal rights. So I've never understood why Me Too has been called a feminist movement. I understand how it happened. I understand that in any movement, radicalization happens and the most radical voices are the ones that are the loudest, then it comes across as the prevailing thought of that movement. That's part of the problem with social media is that it, it leads us to the belief that the extreme thinking is the most popular thinking because the numbers show that mo most people are interested in understanding extreme thinking. But in reality, more people are moderate in thinking and more people understand that we shouldn't only be speaking from two polar extremes and fighting from those polar opposite extremes. And now Amber is painting herself as the poster child for how the Me Too movement went bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, honey, an open letter, some magazine articles that you're going to eventually be able to get are not going to change that perception of you as the abuser. You are an adjudicated abuser and a liar. So let's continue on with this. The Deb Heard case is just an episode among many. One that ended unfavorably for the woman involved, but that we still need. And we're seeing, seeing it right now. It's happening right now to keep on talking about the power dynamics that make it so hard to escape an abusive relationship. The double truth. When we're talking about justice, there are always two truths. The judicial truth and the human truth. The judicial one is made up of proceedings, judgments, application of laws, and interpretations by judges and juries. The human truth sometimes coincides with the judicial one, and some other times tells instead a story of acknowledged injustices and offenses, of power imbalances that become rulings of experiences and sufferings that are interpreted in a completely opposite way from the reality of those who suffered, told, and denounced them. The trial of Amber Heard is over. The judicial truth is that she is guilty of defaming her ex-husband. About the human truth, however, it is reasonable to have opinions. In this case, that Amber Heard was a victim of abuse and reacted violently to violence. You are entitled to your opinion, but it is a disservice to call that the, a human truth when judicially and in, before our very, very eyes and ears, we heard Amber being the abuser over and over and over again. We did not hear Johnny being the abuser in the same way that we heard Amber being the abuser over and over and over again. You cannot change that reality for the human truth, however much you want to explain it. I wonder if she even watched the trial. Battered women are all expected to look like the women in the stock photos used 
to illustrate articles on statistics and data researches. Huddled in a corner, hands on their heads, terrified and unable to move. You know, that is the picture that Amber tried to paint for us of her. When in reality, the pictures that she showed were of her constantly taking pictures of Johnny in vulnerable positions. And it was found in the court of law that the photos that she were showing were doctored, that she staged a TMZ photo shoot a week after an alleged incident with, um, you know, some bogus bruise on her eye that wasn't there the day after the alleged incident happened. (laughs) Y'all, you cannot sit there and tell us that what we saw didn't happen. Those who study the phenomenon of domestic violence know that not a few victims react or attack their attacker in turn. It's a normal reaction. It's the thing that makes you say, well, but I have as good as I got, I can defend myself. And a way to not feel victimized. To say to yourself, I am still in control of this situation. That's right. Amber was the aggressor. We saw this. That is what was, that's what the jury decided upon. What trial were you watching? Many of the opinions expressed on this incident pointed out that the outcome of the trial would make it more difficult for women to talk about the abuse they suffered, especially if the abuser is a wealthy and well-connected man. Stop making this into a gender issue. This is not just about women. This is about any kind of abuse. You're trying to say that if men are, it's easy for them to come out and, uh, and talk about their abuse. You're trying to say that if a man is being abused by a more powerful uh, woman, that, oh, it, there's no problem for him. He'll be totally believed. That's obviously not the case because you're not believing Johnny. And by taking this stance, by refusing to acknowledge the verdict, and by continuing to paint Amber as a victim, you're, you are making it harder for people to come forward and be believed. For all people, the real wealth of powerful people is relational wealth. Money is a way to consolidate your social power. But the thing that makes you safe is the support of your networks of connections and collaborations. In this, Depp and her were never equals neither during their marriage nor during the trial. You didn't watch the trial, did you? You didn't listen to the recordings of Amber treating Johnny like a child, being a condescending nag. I did a video showing that she gaslit him 155 times in 27 hours. I counted every single one of them. She's the one trying to make him look crazy throughout the trial and through, throughout all of those audios and videos. So if it's not okay for a man to do that to a woman, it's also not okay for a woman to do that to a man. And this woman, with the help of her PR team and some naive writers, is continuing to do that to us, the public. We're not buying it. The faults of the mad woman. Laws, trials, and courts do not exist in the absolute vacuum of third-party positions. Justice works by approximation. It is affected by the culture of those who built and are still building its structures, its dictates, its values, and its punishments. If a artist can be acquitted because his victim responded to a text message from him after the assault. If an abused man is not convicted because the abuse is deemed occasional and not continuous, if the abuse of a woman is not recognized as such because she is considered crazy and uncontrollable, it is because the law overlaps with an unwillingness to reason about the complexity of the reactions to abuse, to an underestimation of its impact on the mental health self-esteem even the self-preservation instinct of those who suffer that. That's all true. 
the law represents a culture. And if, and if the culture is steeped in misogyny, the law will be too. Let's keep this in mind today and always. That's where the warping comes in. If misogyny didn't exist, Amber would have won that trial. Bullcrap. Misogyny does exist, and she lost because she was wrong. She lied. She's the aggressor. She's the abuser. Johnny reactively. Full stop. End of story. Now, I find it very interesting that the person who translated this then says this. Gonna check the author's family tree because I don't believe she's 100% Italian. She sounds too smart. Entire group of people in a category and say, well, she's too smart to be Italian. Uh, she's too female to be abusive, right? It doesn't work that way. Those publicists can keep working that dial, working that network, placing those stories, you know, buying those pays and plays wherever they can. It's not going to change the reality. I'm sorry. It just isn't. But we know that people like Amber don't change their minds based on logic. You know what I believe? I believe that even if Amber won this case, she still wouldn't be a victim enough because there still might be some Johnny supporters out there and she still might not reach the kind of seismic stardom that she always wanted. That's the kind of a person I believe Amber Heard is.